And here's another great example of how we use sine, cosine, and tangent. And in this case, we're also going to talk about what we call the arc tangent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, you may say, ooh, something new. Don't worry about it. It's actually very straightforward. So let's go ahead and see how we can use that. Again, what we have here is a triangle. Now, this actually represents something in real life. In physics, for example, we have the resistance, we have what we call the reactance, we have the impedance, you don't need to know what those things are. In the, this case, the resistance is 100 ohms, the reactance is 200 ohms. So here's our equivalent triangle in trigonometry. So let's call this 100, and let's call this equal to 200. And what we're supposed to find is this angle right here of this right triangle. Now, since that's the opposite side to the angle, this is the adjacent side to the angle, we know just the right function. The tangent of theta, by definition, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. And in this case, the opposite side would be y, and the adjacent side would be x. So what we have here is that the tangent, and oh, I call the theta, I actually use it a different angle, I'll call it phi, so the tangent of phi here is equal to y over x. But we're not looking for the tangent of phi, we're looking for phi. So it turns out that you can then say that phi is equal to the arc tangent or inverse tangent of y over x. So we write from this, we write that. So that's the equivalent statement, but now instead of finding the tangent, we're finding the arc tangent. You say, well, what's the arc tangent? Well, it's actually the tangent in reverse. That's why we put the minus one there. And luckily our calculator has the right button for that. So what we're going to do now is plug in the values. So the angle phi is equal to the arc tangent of y, and in this case y was 200 and x is 100. So basically what we're doing is we're finding the angle whose arc tangent is 2 over 1. So what you do now with your calculator, you go 2 divided by 1, of course, we know that's 2. And now, instead of pushing the tangent button, you push the shift or inverse tangent button, the second shift, and then you see tangent to the minus 1 in your calculator, push that button, and out pops 63.4. So that means that phi is equal to 63.4 degrees. Go ahead and try that on your calculator. So this allows us to use the inverse of the tangent function to find the angle. See, normally we know what the angle is and we're looking for y or for x or something like that. In this case, we know y and x, but we don't know the angle, so we do the reverse, the inverse. That's why we call it the arc tangent or inverse tangent. Now, over here, very same thing. We're trying to find the angle, so we can say that the tangent of phi is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And in our particular example here, the opposite side is x, which we call the reactance, and r, which is called the resistance. This is with circuitry, electronic circuitry. You don't need to know what that is. But in this case, this was equal to x was 200 ohms, and r was equal to 100 ohms. Now you can see that ohms and ohms cancel out, so you don't have to worry about the units. And 200 divided by 100 is equal to 2 over 1, which is just what we had over there. So therefore, now we can write that phi is equal to the arc tangent, the inverse tangent, of 2 over 1. We grab our calculator, we punch in 2 divided by 1, we take the inverse second function tangent, and we see that phi is equal to 63.4 degrees. And that is how we find the angle when the opposite and the adjacent sides are known. And that's what we use, that's how we use the arc tangent function, which is what we call the inverse function of the tangent function.